welcome to another episode of The Hollywood Knitter. My name is Allison and I'll be your host. I'm recording on Friday, January 25th, 2018. I mean, 2019. Sometimes it takes me a while to get to that, you know, 2019. Anyways, um, happy new year. I recorded one on New Year's though, but apparently I still am having problems transitioning, obviously, if I'm still saying 2018. I usually do it for about six weeks into the new year where I'm writing it wrong um, before it clicks. Anyways, it is a beautiful, beautiful day here in California. We are going to be in the mid 70s. There's beautiful sunshine. We've had a fair amount of rain recently, so everything is really green and lush. This is why people live in Southern California. It is these winter days when it is just balmy and beautiful, and I know that a lot of the rest of the country is enveloped in cold and ice and other things. So anyways, um, I wanted to get on here and get an episode recorded because I have some FOs. I've been pretty um, monogamous. I'll talk about that a little while um, about the projects and finishing. I talked last time about, excuse me, about wanting to finish up all the projects I had on my needles, kind of like a clear off. Most people do that in December. I did it in January. <laughs> That's just what I felt like doing. Um, anyway, so let me get my notes up. They shut down for a second. Let's start with what I was knitting on and I finished this just the day after I talked to you last time. And this is my uh, Amber O'Brien's Adventurer um, cap, well, shawl, I guess. Um, it's wider than a scarf, not as super wide as a shawl. Mine ended up being about 14 inches wide and it's 88 inches long and it's um, kind of a chevron um, with some lace on a bias you can kind of see I had to kind of keep track of it the whole time because it biases and all of these are my advent calendar minis from um, Suburban Stitcher Diane beautiful job um, so happy with it uh, she when she said she did it she said that if you were gonna be using projects like this or the dust of wraps stall that she picked an order where she thought that they would, you know, kind of blend in one to another. So I just followed her order, um, was surprised, and am loving it. Um, I do love it. I need to get some pictures of it. Um, but I think I really like this shape because it's just kind of the long, thicker than a scarf. You can kind of wear it as a scarf. Um, you can wear it double because I have it so long, which is, this is normally how I tend to wear. Like if I'm bundled up and then... Yeah, I, I need to look at some of the videos where it tells you all those awesome ways to wear it. But I think this will be really versatile for me. Um, it has, it's a, it's definitely a cooler palette than I usually go for. I'm very much an orange and a green kind of girl. And so all of these pales, pinks and whites and, you know, other things are a little out of my palette. But I think that it will be just great piece. And it makes me happy. And it doesn't, what I really like too is it doesn't scream... Christmas even though this was like an advent calendar there's a few kind of Christmassy colors in there but she really did a great job with a lot of different beautiful colors that were holiday-ish but didn't when put together scream hi hey, this is a Christmas project so again this is the Emma Ryan's Adventure Cal I know that she has a shawl kind of pattern and then a cowl pattern and I think they're slightly different I thought about doing the cowl pattern but ultimately I really like this um, ended up being about, two, I keep playing with it <laughs> just to show you, ended up being about 240 grams. So I think I translated that roughly into 1100 yards and I did it in exactly a month, which is really good for me on fingering weight. Um, considering I was doing a little bit of other things at the same time, though I did focus mainly on this. All right. I should stop messing with this because my focus is going out because I'm moving it a lot. So the other thing I finished, so as I said, I wanted to get everything that was cast on off my needles. So the other thing I had on my needles is another shawl. And this is the Keeping Austin Warm Shawl by Francois Dancy. And I picked up this yarn as souvenir yarn when I went to Austin. This is their Hill Country Weavers Yarn KB Twist. And it is a worsted weight um, wool, mo wool mohair tensile mix. And you had to pick up one skein of each. And this was a... Um, 
shop sample and I really liked it. So I actually picked up the yarn and then got the pattern, even though it took me, I think I got this yarn in 2016. So it took me two years to actually knit it. Um, and you can see it's pretty simple. It's just kind of a striping and then you have a lace section, another striping, lace section, striping. Now the sample project had fringe at the end and I was debating whether I was gonna do the fringe, but then that was actually taken out of my hands because I ran out of the gray. I actually didn't have enough. I should have done, I think, one more stripe of the gray and I didn't have enough. <laughs> so I ended up using 100% of the gray and then I think I used about 80% of the pink. And I didn't want all just pink um, tassels kind of thing. Um, Big size shawl, as you can see, triangular. Not really my colors, and because it's wool and it's very warm, it's kind of too warm for me in California. So I think this is gonna go into my gift box, and hopefully I will find a new home for it in a while. Um, I'm a, I don't know if I haven't talked about it in a while, but I'm definitely a, a process knitter, so I'll, I'll just pick up projects and I'll make them, even though they're not for me or not for anyone intended just because I want to, and then I have a gift box that they go in. And sometimes they sit in there a while, like I just went through it after the new year and I ripped some stuff out that I wanted the yarn back or I didn't 100% like the project. And then if it's there too long, like two or three years, or I just don't think I'm going to find someone for it, um, what I did last year is I picked some of those out and I just brought them to the Knockers Retreat. They have kind of a free table and I put them out there to find a new home that way since knitters will always love another knitted gift. And yeah, and that way they can kind of go out into the world and whether they use them or rip them for yarn, I don't care once they're out of my kind of purview and let them loose in the world. And I got my enjoyment in it in the knitting of it. So, so yeah, so this is Keep Austrum Warm Shawl. And um, yeah, it was okay. The pattern, uh, I definitely got the pattern because I fell in love with the shop sample and I don't think it was anything particularly special, but um, yeah, it is what it is. The other thing that I have been feverishly working on is my knitted knockers. And in case you didn't know, knockers is a charity where you make prosthetic boobies and they look like this. And I was gonna stuff one, but am I stuffing? I think I have a little bit. Um, knit out of cotton, maybe some crinkling. Um, knit out of cotton that are then given to women who um, have mastectomies or other reasons, breast cancer or other reasons to remove it. And this can be on their, it's soft enough to go against, I guess, our scars um, or any kind of um, surgical kind of incisions. And so you knit kind of like a triangle and then I do my backs. Most of my backs are done in this other color just because all one white one would kind of kill me and then what you do in the end is you kind of create the little hole and you just leave a long tail and you stuff it through there I'll throw some stuffing in and yeah and then these go to various um, doctors and nurses who then get them to the right people and it is the charity of the knockers retreat the northern california knitting retreat so this is my I think third year making them yeah and so that's not until April, but I kind of wanted to be, I wanted to be done. So I, I knit all of my yarn. Um, here you can kind of see now. This is half stuffed. And then they, you can kind of, they can stuff them to their feeling, and then they're kind of, you know, they're squishy, so they're more like real, real boobs. So I did them in this white, which is Universal Yarns Bamboo Pop, which is a 50% bamboo, 50% rayon. And I had also in this taupe and they both kind of have the beachy color back. And then my friend Holly, Memphis Holly, had given me one that she had knit and then the rest of her skein. And this is some cotton, I'm not sure, but I knit the rest of hers too. So total, I made 14. So, and I've used all my yarn up, I'm 100% finished and I'm going to put these away to bring to the knockers retreat um because as part of that you get like raffle tickets for bringing them and I've gotten some cool prizes from previous years not that that's why you made them I mean it's a great charity I like knitting for charity um they take roughly one for me they were kind of one a night um so I was able to finish them all 
And the other thing that I finished, and I don't have to show you, is I was my niece's socks that I were knitting out of Gail's art um, sock link. She wanted the knee highs that I had started for Christmas and then wanted to really size them on her, which I did. And so I finished the second one. And I will put a picture. Put a picture. Um, so I actually already put those in the mail. So they went out to her. Um, I used most of the skein on that too, I think about 390 yards because they were tall. She wanted knee highs. Luckily she's, you know, eight. So they're skinny knee highs, but I finished that. So that leaves me with one thing on my needles and I sort of decided I'm going to try monogamy for a while. Um, mostly monogamy. So the last thing I have are my socks, which are my purse knitting. And these are ones I started for myself ooh, a while ago. September. And this is the Quarry Yarns October 2016 colorway. This is the first one. And I am this far. I've already turned the heel on the second one. And I'm using the Sockmatician's pattern. Um, he has a toe up pattern. And um, I did my niece's socks on it. And then this is the first sock for me I'm kind of doing on it. So we'll see if I like the fit. It's kind of got more of a turned heel, which i um, trying to find like the perfect heel. I like fish lipstick fish lips heels just because I know it but I don't think it's the best fit for my foot so I'm kind of looking for um, a turned heel ish with a slight gusset so I'm hoping to finish these in the next few days I'm gonna have some car knitting today um, we're actually gonna be heading out for the weekend this is last minute um, not even 100% sure where we're gonna go um, but we decided we're going to go somewhere later today and come back on Sunday and don't have any plans, which is very unlike me. I'm very much a planner, but we're going to kind of wing it. We'll see where we end up and find a room. And yeah, so I'm excited. Um, knitting out of my Halloween Jenny the Potter mug, which I adore. This is like one of my favorite mugs. Um, drinking some... Pearl Grey tea, which is my favorite tea. So those are all of my FOs and my whips. And I do have one more whip. So I talked about wanting monogamy, but the socks are going to be done and I need to have something else. So what I sort of decided for my semi-monogamy is I'll continue having my purse project, which will probably most likely be socks. And then I'm going to try to stick to one project I'm working to working on at home from my make nine. And then if I get bored with that or I am monotonous or I need to throw something in, I'll work a little on my blanket. So I swatched for my next project, which is going to be the Granito by Hohi Locatelli. And uh, the yarn I'm going to be using is Dragonfly. I forget what the, the yarn is called, but it's 100% silk. I actually have two swatches. So I, this is the swatch on the recommended needles and my gauge. And I washed it. Um, it's 100% silk, so it kind of feels more like linen. It doesn't have a lot of, you know, give. And it definitely, um, although it grows, it doesn't bloom. So on the four, I wasn't really happy. You can kind of, let's see if you can see through. It was a little too see-through for me. So I dropped down a needle size and I swatched another three, which I like this fabric more. It's a little more dense. I think it will be a little better. And, but as a result, my gauge isn't, almost almost there for stitch count I think uh, the gauge on the pattern is 23 and I'm getting a 24 but my row gauge is I think the row gauge on the pattern is 31 and I'm getting 40 so I will have to make some adjustments for that so I'm kind of looking at the pattern trying to figure out where I would add a few more rows here and there to make sure that the length is right and then I'm gonna do a kind of Frankenstein I'm gonna follow the body um, for I believe the 48 inch. It's supposed to be six to eight inches of ease, like a lot of Hohe's kind of oversized patterns and I'm a 42 inch bust. Um, so that with my slight gauge difference should give me a roughly a 47 ish. So that should be good. And then I'm gonna follow a, the size up for the sleeves because I have bigger upper arms. Um, my cat is here, she's been, that's, Say hi. Come here, kitty. She was a terror this morning. Um, I think she's not feeling well. So she sounds more and more like a grumpy old lady. She is she is 16 and sometimes 
her meow sound like the grumpiest old lady ever, especially at five in the morning when you don't have to get up for work. And she is just yelling at you. And it's just like, why are you yelling? <laughs> Anyways, so that's what I have going on. I'm going to actually bring that yarn. I've, I've, uh, I'm going to be alternating skeins. This is all from a brighter skein, but there's definitely some color variations between my four skeins. So I'm going to be alternating. I have already wound up the first two skeins and I am going to be bringing that with me today, this weekend. So I'm hoping to cast on and get, um, my goal for this is to get all of the upper body and to, or up the shoulders and sleeves and things like that to get to the body part, which is a lot of stockinette. This is a, lot, a very stockinette sweater so that that can potentially be a mindless knit that when I go traveling in a few weeks. Um, what else do I have? So I have some stash acquisition. The last skein, hopefully, um, not hopefully, most likely my last skein for a long time. Um, I bought on New Year's Eve, um, and this was my mom had requested some Patriot socks. Um, we are from New England originally. My family all lives back there and big Patriots fans. So when I was back there for Christmas, she'd asked me for a pair of socks. So I went to try to find yarn that was Patriots and I actually found a specific yarn that she dyes in Patriots stripes color. So it's the blue, the red, the white, and I think there's some gray in there too. Um, and this is um, artistic yarn by Abby and she has some great yarns, a lot of great yarns. Um, but I stuck to just what I was looking for. So I'm going to probably knit these socks next when I finish mine, just so that I can have them done. And my goal is to send them before next season. Um, I briefly thought about before the Super Bowl, but that's like next week and that'd be crazy. Um, we are actually a bit of a house divided here because I am a Patriots fan and the boyfriend is a Rams fan. So we were very tense last Sunday watching the playoffs and then happy, but I know the Super Bowl is going to be tense for both of us too. Um, yeah, <laughs> it is just a football game, but when you're watching it and it's just like, oh, it's, it's, I couldn't even watch the, the overtime. I just had to like go in the kitchen and listen to it. It was very stressful. So that's kind of all I have in knitting news. I haven't touched my blanket at all, at all or any of the other things. Um, been trying to get, as I said, get all this stuff kind of cleared off. And my goal was by the end of January. So I am going to definitely make that with the socks being the last thing to finish. Um, and then when I do the sweater, I'm hoping to finish this sweater in six to eight weeks. So that's the whole monogamy part of it. If I can speed up how long I do it. So since this is one of the larger projects I have in my make nine as a fingering weight oversized sweater, <laughs> it will take me. Yeah. If it takes me two weeks, or being two months, that will be good. So what do I have up for press junket? So I'm very excited. As I said, unexpectedly traveling this weekend, I think we're going to go up to the Morro Bay Cambria area. Um, I'm, I'm feeling a little kind of small beach town and I love the beach in the winter, uh, especially as I said, it's not like winter other places here, but it's cooler and I can pull out some sweaters to wear and walk around and have some pretty ocean. Uh, for living in Los Angeles and being only 15 miles from the beach, I see the beach once the ocean once or twice a year, it seems. <laughs> Isn't that kind of weird? But um, because of the traffic in LA, which everyone's heard of, it's notorious. Like it, it's not easy to just do a joy ride to the, to the beach. Like it's, it's a trek and a commitment and I don't do it very often. Um, then in two weeks, three weeks, I will be heading out on my extravaganza where I will be going to Miami for a girls weekend with my college roomies who I haven't, we haven't done this weekend since the, their babies were born first. Um, Carter is 18 months and I think, uh, AJ is six months. So we probably haven't done a trip in like two years. So that will be fun to do Miami for a, a weekend with them. And then I'm going to meet my mom at my grandmother's in Orlando, Florida. So I'm going to fly from Miami to Orlando, get a car. And actually my grandmother lives in Lakeland and she'll already be there. She'll have gone the weekend before and hung out with my uncle and we'll be at my grandmother's for a few days. And then on Thursday from Miami, I fly to Virginia beach and go to the Virginia beach getaway with lots of friends that are going to be there. So I'm really excited about that. It's hosted by my friend, Martha, Nick Cripp. And then I'll be flying back. So I'll be gone about 10 days. 
So super excited. Um, also a little concerned because I'm going kind of different weather. The weather in Florida, Miami will be different than in Virginia. So I might have to bring a slightly bigger case than expected or than I usually travel with, which is fine because I'm flying American and I have um, a branded credit card with them. So I get a free check bag. So that's not a big deal to have because I'll be on six flights over those days. So that will be fine. And then I have to, of course, figure out my knitting for the retreat. And I think I'm going to keep it with my sweater, a socks. Um, hopefully I'll be done with those and have another pair of socks, the, my Patriot socks on. And then I think a hat. And I think that would be enough knitting for all of that time. And just in case as backup, I'll have thrown an extra skein of sock yarn in there, but very rarely, even though it seems like in travel, you'll have so much knitting time. I really probably won't. <laughs> um, the first part of the trip, I'll have knitting time on the planes and then not as much with my friends or even my grandmother and my mother will probably be out and about. I'll get a few things here and there. And then at the knitting retreat, um, I'll get some knitting done. So I'll have plenty with just those projects. Then in April, I have the Northern California knitting retreat and that will be exciting. And in June, I have the zombie apocalypse. And that's all I have kind of on the books for right now. I have potentially Rhinebeck this year. I want to go, but I haven't talked to my pals to see about who's going to go and uh, make sure that we're all in for this year. And then, yeah, I need to do, I'll do, I plan on doing another trip to see my family sometime this year too. Hopefully not when it's so cold. So maybe in the, in the spring or the fall, um, specifically around that. And, um, yeah. Um, that's kind of all I have today. I just wanted to take a moment to pop in and show you all of this knitting so that I could put it away and take pictures of it and get it finalized and um, wish you guys all a happy January. Hopefully wherever you are, if you're in the cold part that you're staying warm. I know a lot of my friends are up at the January thaw retreat this weekend and it's Vogue Knitting in New York this weekend, Voting Alive. So I'm sure lots of knitting people are having knitting fun, which is great. And I hope to see some of them soon. And that's all I got. I hope everyone is just having a wonderful time. I, if you need to find me, I'm Allison1031 on Instagram and Ravelry. And I do have a Ravelry group if you want to pop in there. I think my next episode, I think I'm going to bring back um, kind of contests for yarn. I, I need to go through my, my, my stash and I think I'm going to purge a few skeins and give them away on the podcast for the ones that don't spark joy anymore. Have you seen the Marie Kondo kind of um, craze on Netflix right now, which I have not watched. I am a neat, not freak, but very neat and organized person anyways. And I'm afraid if I watch it that I will just go, I will go all Marie Kondo on this place and get rid of a lot of my boyfriend's stuff, which will not be good. So I've resisted actually watching it. So that's a wrap from Hollywood where fantasy meets fiber and dreams are knit. Bye everybody.